I feel very conscious this morning that when I'm standing here, it isn't like Hyde Park Corner. You know, you, you say what you want. As long as you stand on the newspaper, you're all right. But whoever's leading the meeting has a great responsibility. And I feel this morning that I have a great responsibility to bring the love of God into your life. I feel I have a responsibility to tell you that Jesus Christ can satisfy your every need. I have a responsibility to tell you there is a saviour who can save you if, if, you don't, if you don't know Jesus as your personal saviour. And that burdens are lifted this morning at Calvary. Do you know we come in on a Sunday and it's only on a Sunday, but during the rest of the week, we don't know what we have gone through. And sometimes you just don't know what people have gone through. And we come and sometimes you say, oh, he's never spoken to me. And you say, oh, well, what a miserable person that is. Honestly, you don't know what the person has gone through that week. And so sometimes when we come to church, we have to withhold judgment because it isn't our place to judge. It's our place to encourage one another, to lift one another up. I've been reading the scriptures and it's in Philippians. Think on the good things and encourage people. So that's what I'm going to do this morning, to think on the good things and encourage you. So I want you to relax, forget all about last week, but today, we are in the presence of the living God. So we can to open our song with an opening chorus. Holy Spirit, I think we welcome you. <clears throat> Please stand, church, as we worship God. There's nothing worth more that will ever come close. No thing can come.
this morning for what he has done for you in your life. Thank you, Lord. You're going to have a free time at worship, so lift your hearts to God and just say thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. God. Yes, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Don't be afraid. If you want the microphone, you can have the microphone. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Just lift your heart to God. Just thank Jesus what he's done for you in his life. In your life. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. We praise you, Lord. We bless you, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, Jesus, 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 Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Oh, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Mm, thank you, Jesus. Oh. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. While we're in the attitude of prayer, I'm going to ask Eileen to come and open in prayer, please. Thank you, Lord. But you can keep your hearts open and keep praising God. Thank you, Lord. Lord, we just come into your presence this morning with thanksgiving and praise. Lord, we thank you that whether we've had a bad week or a good week, Lord, you know all about it. And Lord, we thank you that we can be here this morning. And Lord, as the service continues, dear Father, may we continue in this uh, worship and praise, dear Lord. Lord, we thank you for the musicians, dear Father, that come faithfully, Lord, and for the singers, for the worship group, dear Father, for everybody that takes part, dear Lord. Lord, we just pray that your spirit will just fall on this place this morning. Lord, we just can't thank you enough. Lord, for your love that you give to us quite so freely. Lord, we don't deserve it. And yet, Lord, you went to Calvary. And so, dear Father, we just thank you and praise you for every good thing that you give to us, dear Father. And we ask all these things in and through your precious name. Yes. Amen. Remain, sit, remain standing, please. Uh, Alex has got a prayer request, so I'm going to ask Alex to pray for this prayer request. Thank you. I just want to pray for uh, a member of the family uh, on my mother-in-law's side, uh, Anthony. Uh, he has uh, cancer, and uh, just if we could pray together for his salvation and also for uh, his healing can just bring him before the Lord. Lord Jesus, we just come before you, Lord. And Lord, we just, we Lord, we love you. Lord, and we just lift your name up. And Lord, we just want to say firstly, thank you, Lord, that we can be here this morning, gathered together before you. And we love you, Lord Jesus, and just thank you for everything that you went through for us. And Lord, we just want to bring Anthony before you. Lord, he has cancer. Lord, and Lord, we want to ask you for his healing, but Lord, even more importantly, for his salvation. And Lord, and this life is so short and we're here today and gone tomorrow. And Lord, I just ask, please, Lord, that you open his eyes to behold you. Lord, that you are the saviour, sweet to the sinner's ear. Lord, and the saviour of souls. And we just ask you, Lord, that you'll lay your hands upon Anthony. Lord, that he might know you. Lord, and that he might have that healing. And Lord, we just give you all the thanks and the praise. In Jesus' name, amen. Hallelujah. Remain standing, you're all right. I just want to, uh, are there any more needs while we're in the attitude of prayer? We don't want you to go away this morning, and if only, if only. Yes, uh, Philip, uh, do you want me to pray for you, Philip? Okay, come out here then, yes, sir. I'm going to ask Pastor Williams if you'll just pray for Philly. Yes. 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 But I praise God that um, it was a nasty fall and two men came and picked me up and put me back on the bike, you know. I don't know where they come from, but, but they come just at the right time. 
and then he also fell over um, in Morrison's and to about help me. Then a man, um, a ge real gentleman, walked with me up to the bus stop. Yes. He's gone walk. I've overdone it a bit. Yes. I've got to rest up a bit. I'm, I'm, I'm quite stiff, yes. but I am recovering. Okay. Yes, good, good. Cars back on the road, wonderful, wonderful. Great. Kindness of strangers, kindness of strangers. You know, sometimes when somebody offers something to you, don't refuse because, you know, there's kindness of strangers and sometimes it's God appointed. Thank you, Pastor. Father, we just thank you and praise you that we're in your house today. We thank you, Lord, as a family, we can pray one for the other. And Father, there are people here today who have got desperate needs, but I know that you are the God who hears and answers prayer. And Father, you hear the weakest cry to you because your ear is always open. You promise never to leave us. You promise never, Father, to let us down because you're a great God and a wonderful God and a wonderful friend. And Father, we pray for Phil and we pray for many others today, Lord, when we think of the problems of, in not only of people within the church, but outside of the church, Lord, in this area, who are desperate for you. And we ask, oh God, that you will move by the power of your Holy Spirit. Because, Lord, that is the only thing that is going to move our nation, Father. And we ask that as we celebrate, Lord, Pentecost, we pray, Father, indeed, that we continue to magnify your name. Because, Father, you do hear us and answer. So accept our thanks today. Meet every need. People, Lord, who perhaps are a bit quiet and silent, Lord, to come forward. But, Father, minister to them today. May they know that you are alive. May they know that you are a great God and a good God. We hear so much bad news, but Lord, we thank you that you love each and every one of us and you want the best for us. But Father, we know that that is conditional as well, that we want to love you and serve you and worship you and praise you. So accept our thanks this morning for Jesus' sake. Amen. Um, I just want to uh, bring you some news. Some, some may say it's sad, but I can assure you it isn't sad. Um, but Graham Charlesworth has gone to be with the Lord, to be united with June uh, Thursday, Thursday evening. Um, I went to see him at eight o'clock, uh, sorry, I went to see him at half past seven, and he, um, he was on oxygen. Uh, but prior to that, it, he was poorly. And I went to the nurse and asked what was going on. And, um, you know, he said that he had an infection and it became uh, bronchi, you know, pneumonia. And on Thursday, I went to see him and he, he was um, struggling for breath. And I just held his hand for half an hour and I prayed that for God's will to be done and that he, he would pass away peacefully in his presence. And I left him at five past eight and I had a text just after nine o'clock to say that he had passed away. So for some may be sad, but we rejoice because we have a hope that is within us. And we know that if we pass from this life to the next, we are sure and confident that our home is in heaven and God's gone before us. So Paul says, I don't want you to be sad like others without hope. We have got a hope. So this morning, we have a hope. So the next chorus. <coughs> going to sing Lord I need you because after those prayers that we've been doing I think we all admit that we do need you Lord don't we we have nothing without our Lord and Saviour thank you Lord
you, Lord. Let's remain standing in an attitude of prayer. We just, I just, we just had another uh, announcement. This our brother Richard Twist has gone to be with the Lord this morning. I assume it's this morning. We say ah, oh, but he's a lovely gentleman, and I've known him for a long, long time. Friday, Friday. Um, so let's, let's just give thanks. Let's just put our hearts. Have a few minutes on reflection. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Lord, we thank you for your servants, Lord, which you have called home, Lord. And I just pray, Lord, that, Lord, that the reward will be resounding. Wow, good, thou good and faithful servant, Lord. And I think of Richard, Lord, and Lord, I think of Jill. Lord, and I think of Nicholas, Lord, and the family. And Lord, I just thank you, Lord, that uh, I'll just pray for your strength to be with Nicholas, Lord. I just pray, Lord, that you'll help him, Lord, at this particular time, Lord. Oh, and for Graham's family, Lord, I just pray for the godchildren, Lord, that as they prepare, Lord, for what needs to be done. I just pray, Holy Spirit, for the peace of God that passes all understanding, Lord. Oh, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I thank you for Andrew and Jennifer and the family in our midst. And I just pray, oh God, that you'll be with them this morning, Lord. Bless them, I pray, and the young baby, Lord. I just pray, Lord, for Andrew, Lord, that you, Lord, will do a work in his life, Lord. Oh, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. He is a
are we in this great prayer for attitude? Let's just uh, continue and we will take communion. So continue in this prayer for attitude and just think about the Lord Jesus and what he's done for us. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Can we sing that chorus again? Here's our peace. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. from being united with Christ, if any comfort of his love, if any fellowship with the Spirit, if any tenderness and compassion, then make my joy complete by being like-minded, having the same love, being one in the same Spirit and purpose. Do nothing out of selfish ambition or vain conceit, but in humanity, in humanity consider others better than yourselves. Each of you should look not only to your own interests, but also to the interests of others. Your attitude should be the same as that of Christ Jesus, who being in the nature of God, did not consider equality with God something to be grasped, but made himself nothing, taking the very nature of a servant, being made in human likeness, and being found in appearance as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient to death, even death on a cross. Therefore, God exalted him to the highest place and gave him the name that is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow in heaven, on earth, and under the earth, and every tongue confess that Christ Jesus is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. Therefore, my dear friends, as you have always obeyed, not only in my presence, but now much more in my absence, continue to work out your salvation with fear and trembling. For it is God who works in you to will and to act according to his good purpose. Do everything without complaining or arguing so that you may become blameless and pure, children of God without fault in a crooked and deprived generation in which you shine like stars in the universe as you hold out the word of life in order that I may boast on the day of Christ that I did not run or labor for nothing. But even I am now being poured out like a drink offering 
on the sacrifice and service coming from your faith. I am glad and rejoice with all of you, so too that you should rejoice with me. So, this is, uh, that's why we come to break bread this morning, but it is a solemn vow, really, a solemn act that we do, that we shouldn't judge one another. So I'm going to give a time of reflection that, on your life, and I just pray, and you pray, that are you worthy to take the bread and the wine? You know, it isn't just, you know, so much stuff has gone on and you need to put your life right with God. Our lives are so busy. We've got time. There's uh, a song used to say, time for pleasure, time for work, but for Christ the crucified, there's no time. I just want you to make time this morning to think about the cross and think about your life as we partake and break bread and uh, take, take the Lord's, uh, the, the communion, the bread and the wine. So can I please have the service, please? Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Jesus, on the night he was betrayed, he took bread and he took bread and gave it to his disciples and said, Take me, for this is my body, which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. This is blood that was shed for you. This is the new covenant. Take this and drink it in remembrance of me. In Jesus' name.
I'm looking for Faith and Bruce. Are they here? 
Oh, right. Okay. Sorry, I couldn't. Uh, yeah. Okay. Come on, church, let's stand. I know we've had some sad news today, but we've just taken communion and we're celebrating all that Jesus is and all that he gave for us. He gave us his life. That's how much he loves us. And it is wonderful and amazing grace. So let's just worship and celebrate our amazing Jesus and all that he has done for us on the cross.
you. Don't be frightened. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah. Faith and Bruce did, did um, a presentation some time ago regarding their um, charity. But I, uh, the, the IT, there was pictures on there, but I couldn't quite understood what they actually did, you know. So I spoke, I spoke to them and I said, what, exact, what is it exactly that you've done? And so it's amazing, it's amazing. Sorry, can you hear? Can you hear now? <laughs> Thanks. So I'm going to ask them really what, what their charity is. So Faith, can you tell us what your charity is please, and what you actually do? Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Gadon, and uh, thanks to Pastor Jim in Absentia and to Pastor Praveen in the house and everyone else uh, to give us once more time to explain what it is like. As he said, most of the people did not understand what we were talking about. So shall I just say, a very blessed and glorious morning to all of us in Jesus' name, amen. amen. So in answer to what God has asked us, um, our charity is called the STARS, Junior Academy STARS. It is an educational charity that is based on Christian values for very young children at a very tender age, from two years to six years when they eventually go to a high school. So this charity is based in a place, in a town, little town called Red Cliff, in Kwekwe, in the Midlands region of a country called Zimbabwe. That's where I originate from, and that's where I was a teacher for 14 years before I came into the UK. And, yes. Mm, okay, so how, how long ago was it, and how was it started? The charity was birthed in 2020, but it was affected by the COVID. So eventually we started it officially in 2021 and it is a registered uh, charity with the Redcliffe Count Council as well as the Ministry of Education and Culture in Zimbabwe. So it is a, an authentic charity catering for the children that I've talked about who are very, very less privileged. Some of them are not going to school. They will only go to a year one without accessing um, uh, uh, nursery or you know preschool so these are the children that we thought we could cater for and he said why did you start it, it it's all because of passion like I said before since I've been a teacher it, it, you know it just like uh, went on like that and mostly the most most important thing why I started this I explained last time that I had a daughter who has since promoted to a higher glory. She was 21 years, she was a second year student uh, doing a course in children's psychology and you know. So I just thought in remembrance of that, we have a house which is not being used by anyone. Why can we not help others? Why can we not put others first? Like, like what he, he read in Philippians 2. So we just thought, we, we, I think it could be a good idea. So I sold this idea to my husband and <laughs> he bought it lovingly, willingly. So we are doing this together. Yes. Okay. Uh, so, excuse, I'm still a bit dumb, right? So, the charity, is it a school or is it an orphanage? It is a school, a preschool that caters for orphanage uh, children, less privileged children, children who have parents that are not working. 
children who have parents, we have single parents, and children who um, are less privileged, really. Okay. And also, let me explain on that one. Because we, because our charity is, we have set a very good standard, so much that those that can afford paying for their children, they are now enrolling, and this is what is helping us going, because we need to pay this stuff. We need to buy this and that, we need to build. So those parents that can afford are helping in by pay. Right. Otherwise, it's a charity for very less privileged people. Okay, right, so the penny's sinking in slowly. Yes. So it's a charity school yes. and not an orphanage. No, okay, not. so it's a charity school mainly for people who are poor and the orphanage, right. I've got that a bit clear now because I couldn't understand it. So I'm glad you've come out and explained, explained it to us, right? And also, also you've, you've answered two questions in one, really, because one of the questions I was going to ask, how did Bruce take this? But all, you've already answered it, you know. And who's, who, the other question was, who's the boss? But I gathered, is it like a Maggie Thatcher, you know? <laughs> principle or or do you you know do you just follow behind and say yes Faith? well you're married Gordon you yes. know <laughs> <laughs> my wife said I'm the head of the family but she's the neck <laughs> yes right let's let's keep to the script then so, <laughs> so so you donated your property for this cause, and can you tell me a bit more, and how did Bruce feel about this? But you've already answered that, haven't you? In the, you know. So how long ago did you did donated this property? So what was the property? Okay. Before I came in the, in the UK, God had blessed me with, with a house. So that house, that's where my daughter was living, the one who has since promoted. The other one is now here, so it was two of them. So it was now vacant. So we kept it, it with some lodgers, but you know, it wasn't looked after. So the time I took my prince to Africa, <laughs> he loved the country, he loved the people. And so when I told him that I was thinking of doing this, uh, charity, he accepted it. So the house, the house now, we started off with using my late daughter's bedroom as a classroom. And now all the three bedrooms are occupied, the lounge is occupied. And then we thought, what are we going to do? We built, me and Bruce and me built a cottage in that uh, uh, place. So that's where we were living every time we go on holiday. But then now, because the charity is growing, we thought, we are only here for two years. Why don't we give up our cottage again? And we just will remain with the bedroom only. So we will be living in the, bed, in, in the bedroom. But um, yes, this is what we have done. So starting from 10th of September, when the schools start, that cottage will be utilized by the children, and we will just remain with a bedroom. That's where everything of ours will be, the two or three weeks that we will be there. Oh, that's lovely, yes. So, so obviously there are needs, but what can we do as a church, you think? Thank you so much, uh, Gordon, for asking. It's a question and it has to be answered. So our request from the church is prayers and prayers. And just encouragement, like what we are doing, you are clapping hands, we, it, we, we, we feel so much appreciated for what we are doing. But mostly we, we need your prayers. The rest I cannot say. We need, we want to build. We have been, we, we bought a stand, a land for $18,000, but we only paid 9000 because the county council realized the good thing that we were doing in the community, so they have did, you know. 
Yes. So we want to build. Last May when we went, generous people from our big family here, they contributed something to, towards what we had and we did a borehole. But like I said, it's not yet functional, it's not yet finished. There are some things that we need to be doing. And that land needs to be built block by block. We are just like giving us ourselves by God's grace at least four years, a block per year, so that eventually we will get back our house because we have a bigger family that we, you know, that, that's coming. Yes. Yeah. That's wonderful. And you've, you've answered the next question. The plan forward is, is to pre, uh, sort of provide, isn't it, for yes. people. And the main thing now is water. We're trying to get this borehole to get water. Yeah, that's, that's, that's great. And the building, yeah, yeah. Well, God will never see us short, will he? Yeah. And I, I thank, thank, you know, Bruce and Faith for, for their faithfulness. Thank you. Right. Okay, can I, sorry, 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 before you clap your hands, can I just uh, testify, you know, and tell the church that God has blessed me with a very wonderful and supportive husband. Thank you. Yes, yes. Well done, Bruce. Thank you. Yes. It, I, have, I have got it written down here, right, behind every successful couple, right, but behind every successful man, there's, all, there's always a frustrated woman. <laughs> and behind every successful woman, there's a very, very um, loving... Husband. <laughs> right, um, we we get we are running short of time, right? But I like to, uh, right. The other thing I really on my heart, and we've all written down, but we, is compassion, and um, right to say, <laughs> Bill, Bill, I've asked Bill and I've asked Maria because they support compassion and I support compassion myself. But I just wanted to know, I did ask Pastor this and he said he was going to find out, how many of us in the congregation support compassion? All oh, right, that's, 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 very, that's very good. Maybe another, maybe another week we can have a, a bit more extended um, version of it, I think. Um, because of time, Maria, time has run out. I'm sorry, and I've, got, I've prepared the same. May, maybe I think another week, <clears throat> rather than cramming everything in and spoiling the meeting, maybe I think God has spoken, and we want, I want to give time for the word, and rather than squeezing everything in, and we'll way run over. And I know... You know, I don't want you to have to roast Gordon for, for lunch. So I think, I think um, we've done well, and I'm going to ask Alex now to come and give the word. Thank you. Oh, good morning, everybody. Good morning. We've had... Uh, Joyful news and sad news all in one, haven't we, today? Well, uh, it's been sad hearing about, you know, those who we love amongst us going to be, but they've gone to be with the Lord. And we know that they're in the Lord's hands. What they must be experiencing now must be truly amazing. To see Jesus and to see the marks in his hands, it must be absolutely amazing. Well, um, <coughs> I believe the Lord's laid on my heart this morning to speak uh, the, about the parable of the ten virgins. And I believe this uh, is such an important parable. We know, don't we, all scripture is important. Uh, but some things are even more important than others. And I believe this is really speaking to our generation and needs to be heard all across the churches um, it's a parable of the ten virgins. So I just want to begin by reading the passage first. 
in Matthew chapter 25. So we see, it says, Then shall the kingdom of heaven be likened unto ten virgins, which took their lamps and went forth to meet the bridegroom. And five of them were wise, and five were foolish. They that were foolish took their lamps and took no oil with them. But the wise took oil in their vessels with their lamps. While the bridegroom tarried or delayed, they all slumbered and slept. And at midnight there was a cry made, Behold, the bridegroom comes, go ye out to meet him. Then all those virgins arose and trimmed their lamps. But the wise answered, saying, Not so, lest there be not enough for us and you. But go ye rather to them that sell, and buy for yourselves. And while they went to buy, the bridegroom came, and they that were ready went in with him to the marriage, and the door was shut. <clears throat> Afterward came also the other virgin, saying, Lord, Lord, open to us. But he answered and said, Verily I say unto you, I know you not. Watch therefore, for ye know neither the day nor the hour wherein the Son of Man comes. Amen. What a wonderful promise that Jesus is coming back. We look to what he has done and we look forward to what he's going to do. <clears throat> now, we'll look at the parable of the ten virgins. But firstly, Matthew chapter 25 is a continuation from Matthew chapter 24. Because in Matthew 24, Jesus spoke to the disciples about what things shall come to pass leading up to his second coming. And the disciples asked Jesus three things. And this was a private conference, you might say. Firstly, they asked Jesus, when shall the temple in Jerusalem be destroyed? And he answers that in Luke chapter 21. The next question was, what shall be the sign of Jesus' coming? And thirdly, what shall be the sign of the end of the world? And Jesus answers those two questions in Matthew chapter 24. He tells them what things to look for, what things to watch for leading up to his second coming. So it's important for us, isn't it, that we are aware that of the signs of the times that Jesus has told us of and spoken of. And he says, when we see these things come to pass, Jesus says, know that the kingdom of God is near. The kingdom of God is near. So having said that, let's come to Matthew chapter 25. We read in verse 1, Then shall the kingdom of heaven be likened unto ten virgins, which took their lamps and went forth to meet the bridegroom. Now, the word of God is so exciting. We, we discover that one verse is explained by another somewhere else. And it takes you through an adventure in the word. And I'm really hoping that this will excite you and get you into the word of God even more. Now, this parable speaks of the state of the church at the time of Jesus' coming. In verse 1, Jesus likens the kingdom of heaven to ten virgins. Now, what does a virgin symbolize in the Bible? A virgin symbolizes a church. It can also symbolize an individual believer. But principally, it symbolizes a church. Here, us at Silverdale, a local church, is a virgin. We're in the world, but not of it. That's how we're to be. We're unspotted, as the scripture says, from the world. In 2 Corinthians 11, verse 2, this is what Paul said to the church at Corinth. Notice, he says, For I am jealous over you with godly jealousy. For I have espoused you to one husband, that I may present you a chaste virgin to Christ. Paul there, an apostle, had this godly jealousy for that local church to espouse her as a chaste virgin to Christ. 
And so then we read in verse 1 that these ten virgins took their lamps. This symbolises the church taking the word of God. It says in Psalm 119, verse 105, Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. The word of God is a lamp and the virgin is the church that takes it. Then we read in verse 1 that these ten virgins went forth to meet the bridegroom, which of course is the Lord Jesus Christ. And we read, don't we, of the church looking for his coming, watching for Jesus' coming, the blessed hope it's called in the scriptures. And we're to be as strangers and pilgrims in the earth. It's true, isn't it, that this earth is not our home. We are passing through. We're looking for a city whose builder and maker is God. And so we are a virgin, a corporate body. But then we read something interesting in verse 2. It, Jesus says, and five of them were wise, and five were foolish. So, now just notice this. The churches, they all have the word of God. They all have the scriptures. And they're looking for the appearing of Jesus. But, some are wise, and some are foolish. That's interesting. And Jesus tells us something about foolish virgins or foolish churches in the following verse. Verse 3, Jesus says, They that were foolish took their lamps and took no oil with them. They have the word of God, but they don't have oil. Now, Jesus is telling us these things because he wants us to understand because he's a merciful God. Oil in the scriptures symbolizes the enlightenment of the Holy Spirit. Listen to what it says in Proverbs chapter 1, verses 23. Turn you at my reproof. Behold, I will pour out my spirit unto you. I will make known my words unto you. The Holy Spirit, the oil, is the enlightenment of the church. So what we see here is foolish churches are churches that have the word of God, but they don't have the oil. They don't have the spirit to understand what's written in it. We see, don't we, in the world, people of an, of an academic stature in these great universities, and if they don't have the spirit, if they don't have the Lord Jesus in their life, then they are without understanding. And how often are the scriptures misunderstood, misused and applied by these? But Jesus particularly here is speaking of the church itself, foolish and also wise virgins. But they are professing themselves to be wise. And the scripture says in Romans chapter 1 verse 22, professing themselves to be wise, they became fools. So you see, they're fools because they've got the wisdom of this world rather than the wisdom of God. And that's a different thing, isn't it? So let's carry on. In verse 4, we read, But the wise took oil in their vessels with their lamps. Amen to that. What is a vessel symbolic of in the scripture? A vessel symbolizes a body. We read in 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verses 6 to 7, For God, who commanded the light to shine out of darkness, hath shined in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. But then notice this. But we have this treasure in earthen vessels, that the excellency of the power may be of God and not of us. The excellency of the power can't be of us. This precious treasure is held in earthen vessels, in our body. And so the wise churches have 
oil in their vessels. They have the spirit in their members, the spirit dwelling in believers. And so we come to verse 5. We read, while the bridegroom tarried, that means delayed, they all slumbered and slept. Now, this is interesting. All the churches are looking for Jesus' coming, but the Lord delays in coming. Now, why is this? Well, the scripture says that the Lord is not slack to come. He is long-suffering, the scripture says. He is bearing long with us. Why? Not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. The Lord is waiting for us to repent, to turn from those things in our life that are displeasing to him. And you know, often when we read the Bible, the Bible reads us, doesn't it? But you know, it never leaves us in a bad place if we open ourselves up to it. It will read us and the Spirit will make us holy ongoing through it. Because Jesus said, sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is truth. Amen. What an amazing thing that God has given to us. So the Lord is delaying to come. Nevertheless, we read over time that these virgins slumber and sleep. And Paul, he says this, knowing that our salvation is nearer than when we believed, he says this, and that knowing the time, that now it is high time to awake out of sleep. For now is our salvation nearer than when we believed. The night is far spent, the day is at hand. Let us therefore cast off the works of darkness and put on the armour of light. Paul also says it is high time to awake out of sleep, he says. We read also in 1 Thessalonians 5, Therefore let us not sleep as do others, but let us watch and be sober. For they that sleep, sleep in the night, and they that are drunken, are drunken in the night. We're not to sleep, brothers and sisters. We're not to sleep. We're to be a virgin and to awake out of our sleep. To sleep means to be not watchful. It means to not watch for the coming of the Lord, to become unaware about it. Now, the night in the Bible symbolizes the evil time before the Lord comes. The prophet Isaiah spoke of the night in Isaiah chapter 60, verse 2. It says, For behold, the darkness shall cover the earth, and the gross darkness the people. But the Lord shall arise upon thee, and his glory shall be seen upon thee. The night is as it was in the days of Noah, as it was in the days that were before the flood, when God saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth. And that the imagination of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. And don't we see that today? It's getting darker. It's getting darker. The night is setting in. And we need to have eyes that are open to see in the dark. We need our lamps lit to see in the night. It's getting darker. The government now we know is legalizing all sorts of things. And we've got to not compromise with it be faithful to the word and to stand on that rock and not that sand so we see that this present evil time is growing dark and Paul speaks of it in the last days and it's quite a thing to read but what does the scripture say the day of the Lord so comes as a thief in the night we know neither the day nor the hour in which the Lord comes, but we know this, that the day of the Lord so comes as a thief in the night. And so we come to verse 6 of the parable. We read this, and at midnight there was a cry made, Behold, the bridegroom cometh, go ye out to meet him. Remember, this is to all ten virgins that are sleeping. All ten are sleeping. That includes the wise, even the wise churches that have the lamps and the oil. 
sleep for a time. And we do see this in our times. The midnight speaks of that time to come, as we've said, in which the wickedness of man shall be great in the earth. It's the final hour of the night, mm -hmm. midnight. It's a time when we read in the scriptures of the Antichrist and the false prophet that shall arise and deceive the whole world. And the whole world will be in darkness. And this is yet to come. And we need to have our lamps lit. A very dark time. And it seems that the one who makes us cry is the Holy Spirit. And that's the porter whom the Lord commanded to watch in Mark 13, 34. And at midnight that cry will be made. The cry will come through probably the ministers in the church to the churches to wake up. Jesus is coming. And I think that cry we probably see it in part already now. And then we come to verse 7. He says, Then all those virgins arose and trimmed their lamps. So the churches will wake up. They will realize Jesus is coming. It's real. He's going to come back. And so they all trimmed the lamps. Now we know that the lamp is the word of God. And the word trimmed there is also translated adorn in Titus chapter 2 verse 10. And so the churches, when they realize, they will prepare themselves according to the word. They will adorn the doctrine of God by being prepared according to it. Jesus is coming. So they will prepare, a bit like uh, preparing for marriage. When the bride, uh, she dresses in the lovely dress and makes herself ready, doesn't she? For, for when the husband comes and they meet and they get married. And that, that's the same thing. <clears throat> but, but, the foolish churches then will not have oil in the lamps. He says in verse 8, And the foolish said unto the wise, Give us of your oil, for our lamps are gone out. Now that's, I think, a very frightening thing. Mm. I remember asking the Lord once, what does this mean? The lamp to go out. And you know, it's such an unexpected time. You know, when the Spirit reminds us of the Scriptures, what things mean. And what came into my mind is they quenched the Holy Spirit. To quench the Spirit. And when I looked up at the Greek word, it's the same word as gone out here in this parable. They quenched the Spirit, probably through sin and worldliness. The spirit is slowly pushed out. And so the lamp will go out. They'll be without understanding in the scriptures and will not be ready when Jesus comes. Now, can I ask each one of you here, are you really ready for Jesus to come? Do you feel prepared in yourselves? Or would you want it to put off for another day? You know, there's an interesting passage in the Song of Solomon of two... Um, of, 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 uh, you've got Solomon, who's the king, and then you've got his bride, which is the, in the Song of Solomon. And there's two events there. She's in bed on the first one, and she's sleeping. But she gets up early and goes looking for King Solomon, and she finds him. But when we come to the second one in Solomon chapter 5, she's in bed and doesn't want to get out. And he comes knocking on the door. Now remember, he knocks on the door in Revelation on the church. He comes knocking on the door, but she's not ready. By the time she gets herself ready and opens the door, he's gone. That's the foolish virgin. Now, we don't want to be in those shoes. We need to be ready. We need to be real with God. And as Brother Gordon said earlier, you know, if there's things wrong in our life, let's turn from them and be real with God and follow Jesus. It is a cost, isn't it, to follow Jesus. Pick up our cross and follow him. But unfortunately, the, there will be churches that are not ready when he comes. And so they ask for him to, uh, for, the, for the oil. And of course, the, the wise have to say in verse 9, But the wise answered, say not so, lest there be not enough for us and you. But ye go ye rather to them that sell and buy for yourselves. You see, each one of us must receive the grace of God for ourselves. And that's sufficient for us to be ready for Jesus to come. 
The Lord has given us everything we need. He has not left us without. And he's a merciful and he's a long-suffering God. And he's waiting on us to be ready. We read there in Psalm 49, verse 7, None of them can by any means redeem his brother, nor give to God a ransom for him. So we must have the Spirit for ourselves. So the wise virgins will have to say to the foolish, But go ye rather to them that sow and buy for yourselves. Now what does that mean? It's interesting, isn't it, when we read these parables. It takes us through an adventure. The Lord wants us to seek these things out. And in Proverbs 23, verse 23, we read, uh, have I got that on, on the, yeah, yeah um, buy the truth and sell it not, and uh, also wisdom and instruction and understanding. How do we buy the truth? We redeem the time, as the scripture says. We spend time reading the scriptures to understand, to listening to the Lord's ministers in the ministries, and knowing what's to come. The book of Daniel and Revelation in particular are illuminating each other and we get a lot of understanding from those concerning the second coming. But of course the prophets, both major and minor, speak on these things as well. And so this will be, remember, at midnight. Just as Jesus is about to come, they'll go, the foolish, to get understanding, but it's going to be too late. They should have got it now. Wow, today is the day of salvation. And so we come to verse 10. And while they went to buy, the bridegroom came, and they that were ready went in with him to the marriage, and the door was shut. Where have we also seen that before? The door was shut. Noah's Ark, amen. And only eight went onto that ark, only eight. But there was a long time for people to come onto it. And like it is today, the church is a spiritual ark. And we want as many to come to Jesus now while there's time. Let's not put it off. And so when the Lord comes, they'll go out to meet him. Now where will they meet him? They shall be caught up together to meet the Lord in the air and so shall we ever be with the lord and those that have died in christ we shall see again and that includes our brother richard that includes our brother graham and others that have gone before us they will be resurrected and we will meet the lord together in the air praise god for that we will all be reunited and so but when that door shut it's shut and unfortunately there will be churches that are not ready There'll be individuals that are not ready. And so we need to ask the Lord in mercy for his mercy upon us. And we see there a picture there of the five virgins outside of the door. And Jesus will say, well, they will say to Jesus, Lord, Lord, open to us. But then we read the Lord's answer in verse 12. And it's a devastating answer. But he answered and said, Verily I say unto you, I know you not. Do you know, I ask the Lord and I seek the Lord, I'll never hear those words. And I pray that there's nobody here that's going to hear that. I really do. The Lord will not know them. Now why won't he know them? 2 Timothy 2.19, The Lord knoweth them that are his. And what it say in Romans, But if, if any man have not the spirit of Christ, he is none of his they had no oil they didn't have the oil and so what will be fulfilled in these is what is said in jeremiah chapter 8 verse 20 the harvest has passed the summer is ended and we are not saved so we see brothers and sisters the church it takes the word of god the wise have the oil to understand it but the foolish don't so we need to have the oil in our lamps now while it's called today. Don't leave it, put it off. We don't know the day or the hour in which the Lord comes, but he's coming like a thief in the night. And so we come to the final verse. Jesus, having spoken this parable, says to us, Watch therefore, for ye know neither 
the day nor the hour wherein the Son of Man comes. We don't know the day or the hour, but the Lord's going to come as a thief in the night. And so his word to us this morning is watch. The Lord says, watch. We need oil in our vessels now. And the thing is, as wise churches are growing and understanding more in the scriptures, as the Spirit unveils it to them, as the coming of the Lord draws closer, foolish churches are understanding less as the veil is coming down and as the lamp is slowly going out. Let that not be us. And I trust the Lord that this will not be us. So we're to watch. If you think about it, there's probably less interest in the churches now than there was 50 years ago in the coming of the Lord. More books seem to be coming out then, a more closer look at the scriptures. But there's less now. And so let's conclude. Jesus comes as a thief in the night. Therefore, the Lord calls us to repent and believe the gospel. Jesus calls us to turn from those things that displease him and to believe the gospel. What's the gospel? That Jesus died on the cross for us and he rose again the third day. And in him we have eternal life. We have eternal life in Jesus. And secondly, we're to preach the gospel in all the world. We want others to be with us when we go. We don't want to go without him, without them. And to be ready for the coming of the Lord. And so I do pray that this will uh, be a blessing to each one of you here. That it will encourage you to seek the Lord, to know the scriptures and to be ready truly when Jesus comes. Amen. Thank you. Alex, that's a wonderful message. Let's take that home. Shall we sing our final hymn and the collection, please? I feel like singing is coming soon, or give me oil in my lamp, one or the other. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Hallelujah. Have we got one? Yeah, we've got Cornerstone. Cornerstone, okay, fine. Please stand, church, as we close the service singing Cornerstone. <laughs> Jesus Christ.
we're just going to give thanks for the offering and then I'll like the congregation to just to say the grace to each other. So Lord, we just thank you for your people, Lord, and we thank you just for the offering that's given. I just pray, Lord, that it will be used for the extension of your kingdom, Lord. Amen. Amen. Now may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all evermore. Amen. Amen.